This is Office Hours. A show for sharing experiences and stories in governance, risk management, and compliance. Damn, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. I love this quote. (laughs) Totally. And this is clearly the problem with audit risk compliance people. Uh, Awful lot of opinion, not enough data. But everybody assumes analytics are complicated or that they have to have some big program or special data hires to get started. That is a great introduction to what we're going to talk about today because it doesn't need to be that hard. So I'm going to take you through what I think are the five steps to building a data automation program. And that might seem hard, five whole steps. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Before you get started, what do you mean by a data automation program? Well, data automation program, what I mean by that is automating some of your work, some of your workflow, some of your business decisions or your reporting, just automating a lot of that manual tasks away um, and providing that information at the right time with the right context so that you can use it to basically run a better business. So anytime people are doing multiple lookups, you're spending a lot of time copying back and forth between spreadsheets, reconciling stuff, all of that is prime for data automation. Yeah, easy example is, like you just said, I have five spreadsheets. My job is at the end of every month to copy the data from the five spreadsheets, uh, run an Excel macro or do some pivot tables, and then pass the spreadsheet on to the person who needs the data. Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to do that every month? Totally. So analytics or the the opportunity to use data analysis does both. Gives me some insight into what's going on in that data as well as automate away all that manual work to do it. And that's where you're going to take us today. Exactly. And step one is actually simple. Quick wins with data aggregation. So this is back to the point of data automation, data analytics, data analysis does not need to be complicated. In fact, in my opinion, you really only need three data analytic or data commands in order to do some really powerful things. One, you need to be able to join data or combine it together. Think about combining your your CRM, your customer master table, join your customers with your financial data or what you're selling to those customers. Join that data together, summarize by, and then summarize, which is grouping the data, summarize it by customer. Now you know exactly how much each customer is paying you. And then filter, maybe I wanna filter by region or by market segment or by customer type. To me, with these three commands, you can actually take care of a majority of your reporting needs, um, as well as accomplish quite a few complicated tasks. So everybody assumes that starting a data program is all about buying a whole bunch of tools and hiring people. And like, but this is really simple. So idea being, if I were, what if I were a company that was worried about FCPA and I was going to look for bribes? Um, a dead simple thing might be. Take data from the take data from the purchase orders, take data from the employee master file to to join it and get some employee information about who's making those purchases. Summarize it by summarize it well, or better yet, first filter it. Filter that joined data for um, words in the description like donation or um, gift or things of that nature, and then summarize on employee department uh, or summarize on employee country to identify very quickly, very quickly with those three simple, those three simple commands in ACL or those three simple analysis steps in whatever tool you're using, uh, that quickly I can get a real good picture of what country should I be looking at to consider bribery activity. Yeah, and sometimes you don't even need all three of them. Sometimes just doing summarizing your data on one key field can provide a lot of insight. I had one customer who thought there was no risk in their gift cards. So every time they had a support phone call, their support had the power to give out like a $5, $50, $100 gift card, depending on the scale of the complaint. So they thought there was no risk there. Well, I actually pulled their data when I had some free cycles because they gave me access to it. 
I just summarized their gift card data by year, and they were giving out like $100 million a year in gift cards all of a sudden. And when I showed them that data, they were like, oh, my God, there's actually a lot of risk there. We should see if there's any fraud. So <laughs> dead simple. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't think we need to dig into this anymore, but if you learn, whether it's in Excel, our analytics product, or any other analytics product, how to join some data together, summarize it, and do some simple filters, you can actually accomplish a lot. Get started. To me, that's step one, and quick wins. Every, every company in the world will be able to get some quick wins from those. Totally. Step two, once you've mastered the three commands, and to be honest, if I, if I go back to that, there's probably a few more, like maybe duplicates, stuff like that, that are good quick wins. Um, but step two um, basically is going deeper on your analysis. So maybe doing some more advanced um, analysis. And this could be, this could be as simple as um, you know, running a Bamford command to see if there's any anomalies in the, the actual numbers in the data. Or it could be something as um, complicated as doing some predictive analysis to see if um, to see you know what might happen in the future, or um, to kind of land to a previous office hours episode, do some scenario analysis where we're trying to see what are the different pos possible outcomes, and are the outcomes are those the outcomes we expect, or how can we prepare for those outcomes? So if I've learned something as simple as filtering, joining, filtering, and summarizing, um, these things all are starting to sound intimidating to me, Kev. But something like Benford's law, it's actually dead simple, right? I take a whole bunch of um, I take a whole bunch of purchase orders do Benford analysis on the amount, and I see what just looks out of the ordinary because it's recurring. Numbers are occurring in a population in a way that they shouldn't be. That fast, that simple. Yeah, it's basically one command in our analytics tool and in some other ones. And then basically what Benford says is the probability of a number occurring is more, is gonna, is more likely at one, less likely at two, and goes down from there just like this nice little graph I have here. And so anytime the numbers aren't following that rule, you can just like, oh, why aren't they following that rule? And you can do some investigation. So once you've, once you've had the experience you described before of the gift cards, I did something dead simple, found the gift cards. Now, in your experience, I imagine you got excited about this. You already have a whole bunch of data to work with. Actually taking on step two isn't nearly as complicated as it sounds if you start with one narrow, simple example like that. Yeah, I think the key thing here is uh, taking the right data analysis technique and pointing it at the right problem. And so none of these are that complicated if you just do some research and understand how they work, and then you're able to point them at the right problem, and then essentially you're able to do advanced data analysis without really it being that complicated. Cool. Step three is taking all of the stuff that you did in step one and step two. What are the things that are highly repetitive, the high value tasks that you do the most or take the most time and automating those away? So in ACL language, we write scripts to do this. So. Imagine that, uh, imagine the example where we were talking about joining some data together, summarizing and doing a filter and getting a really good insightful outcome about our data. Essentially, I just copy those commands from a log to a script and now I don't need to do those three commands anymore. I run the script every time I get the new data and it gives me the output. I think this is important though. This is the difference in building a data automation program, which is what's actually important for GRC professionals compared to just using your traditional BI tools. BI tools are fine and they have their place, but what you just described is, Hey, I'm Kevin. I found this cool thing about gift cards. Once you've done it one time, you copy that into a script, and now you can run it every month, every day, every minute, whatever, and um, and forever again do that analysis with literally one click of a button. 
Yeah, and so many times working with clients, helping them scale up their data automation program or help them scale up data analytics, their biggest problems are taking all of these spreadsheets, consolidating them together and producing a report. And they spend weeks and sometimes months doing that. Imagine you, you just automate that way with a button and then you free up all your time to do other things. Totally. So this is where buzzwords like robotic process automation come in, where using automation to robotically do these tasks, it's like adding capacity to your team, right? Taking back hours every month, every time you got to run this analysis. Exactly. Okay. That's a good step three. Step four is about making your data actionable. And so what I mean by this is you do all your data analy analytics work, maybe say you do your Benford analysis and you find, you find some anomalies in the data, but you're not quite sure. Maybe you need some help from someone else in the company. So uh, we were talking about maybe finding some invoices where the invoice numbers don't quite look right or don't follow the right pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to need somebody from Accounts Payable to help me investigate those anomalous transactions. So step four is about, okay, now I did my data analytics work. I have these anomalies or weird detections. How can I take that to the next step and make those data insights actionable? So it seems to me that the obvious thing, what we would typically say, my background is an auditor, the fallback would be, uh, okay, we take those and we email the spreadsheet. Yeah, and so you email the spreadsheet, but how are you gonna, how do you know what someone does with that spreadsheet? How do you follow up? How do you know the loop has been closed and the root cause has been remediated? Totally, and how do I get any automation around when they sit on it for 30 days and I've already forgot about it to both remind me and escalate it to their boss? Exactly. So I'm just going to show you a quick example going over to, we're a little biased, we work at ACL. So I'm going to show you a quick example of um, basically I have this cyber security um, incident report where I've published my data into our results module. And then every time an incident comes in, um, I basically need to look at the incident, see what the nature of it is, um, and then do something about it. So this is exactly the same as what you described before, right? So all you're doing here is you've taken the analytics tool, you've pulled data from probably a, um, a SIEM system, security incident and event management system, and done whatever you needed to do, likely joined it with some other data, did a bit of filtering, etc. Now you've published these, these incidents or these attacks that have happened into here, uh, and we want to make sure somebody followed up and closed them out. Exactly. That roughly the scenario? That is roughly the scenario. So I have this um, denial of service attack that happened here. Maybe I need to follow up with um, someone in our LAC region. So I can just, I'll just demonstrate really quickly. I can process that transaction. I can assign it a transact. Uh, process, a by the way, is the Canadian word for process. <laughs> Thanks for translating for welcome. our uh, American watchers out there. You're welcome. Um, and now I can provide some workflow to our data insights. So I can give it a status so that we know I've looked at it and it's now under review. Um, I can give it a priority so that we can, people know the weight of this particular one. And then I can assign it to, and since Dan's being so nice today, I'm gonna <laughs> assign it to him so he gets an email. Um, and then very quickly, I'm able to take a transactional record from my data analysis, doing some joins and some summarizes, and provide some workflow and action around that to ensure that people are looking at it and doing something about it. Right. And that what they did about it is being captured in a system. So I'm just going to assign that to Dan. And then taking that the next layer, you just saw me manually process that record. Um, we also have... We also have a feature that we call triggers that I think I showed um, in a previous session where the, you can then take that manual action I did and say every time a LAC region security incident comes in, I want to automatically assign that to Dan. I'm able to use a trigger to essentially easily look at the data and do that for me. Again, using robots to automate or the process. Or my case where it, my case where it sat too long and you want to escalate it, my case. 
I sat on it. I sat on this exception too long. Let's escalate it to my boss to ask why haven't we why haven't we done anything about this issue? So, any, long story short, you've actually with this with this follow on actionable piece. It means you're not wasting your time doing the data analysis in the first place because somebody actually has to do something about it. Right. And this is how Good we encapsulate it in what we call data automation. Not just automating the analyzing of the data, but automating the workflow and the actions that need to happen. And, the, and most importantly, just the communication, right? Communication right. of outcomes uh, to show the value of what you did. So that is step four, making your data uh, automation actionable. See, it's simple. And step five, turning your automation into a program. And so what do I mean by that? So turning into a program, this will mean different things to different people depending on the scale of your organization. But basically it's things like having a centralized location for your scripts or your automation, having a process for, hey, we really need this, um, we need this financial report by region and by month. Um, that needs to come into, now that you've gone through all this, you probably have a data analytics team that comes into the analytics team, they prioritize it with other requests, they have a process for making sure that the data is accurate and valid and they maybe do some user acceptance testing. So there's kind of all these things down the line into building a scalable program and so you can provide data automation services essentially to other parts of the business. So it's like a snowball. As you've had some successes, let's here's your gift card example again. I found this uh, I found this gift card issue. I moved on to uh, my bribery example, and I found some potential bribery areas. We've got some good things happening here. Uh, we begin, that's where you build support for scaling it out. And that's where this issue of, uh, of sustainability, centralization, get it off the laptops, get it into a central location, um, all of those sorts of things become uh, more important. Yeah, and I've seen it time and time again where our customers will start really small with just a really small data problem. And then a couple years later, they see the value, they keep building on it, small pieces at a time. And all of a sudden you have a dedicated team and resources to doing data services for your whole company. So the key though, so at least in my experience, Kev, is um, the way to avoid it taking multiple years is rather than starting out with, we're going to analyze everything, build this full process, but do it on one thing. So take the take the gift cards, if that's the case, and run it all the way through this pro, all the way through these steps, so that not only is it automated, it's getting fixed and it's getting communicated, fixed, taking action, and we have a program for how it gets updated when our gift card giving program changes. Um, then you've proven the model, and then you can very quickly add the rest of the add additional tests and steps. So I got one more question for you, though. Sure. Um, I think you made these five steps up. I did make them up. They came out of my head. <laughs> so the authoritative <laughs> Kevin Legere guide, five step guide. So how did you arrive on these five steps? That is a very good question. Well, I used to work. My primary job is now um, doing product stuff here at ACL. But for years, I actually worked on our consulting services team implementing essentially data automation, helping our customers run, build, and implement data automation programs. Um, and I just remember I had this one customer who I always come back to this story because I kind of love it. Um, they bought some consulting services. I showed up on site. Um, basically, they just bought analytics and some services because they want to get started doing some data stuff, but they didn't know what they wanted to do. So I show up on site. That's quite a familiar scenario. We, we bought the tool. Now we, now we bought the tool. We didn't know exactly what we were going to use it on. Thought we were supposed to do analytics. What next? Yeah. So I show up. So on, Kevin shows up. I show up, <laughs> I show up on site and essentially the the main manager who who bought this, I show up and he's like, hey, we're really busy this week. Um, can you just kind of lay low for the first couple days and work on something else? And then we'll we'll get to you on Wednesday. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, like. Good use of consulting fees. Yeah, good use of consulting hours um, and paying my T&E at the same time. 
Um, so I actually used that time to start walking around and talking to some of the people on his team, just asking him, oh, like, what are you guys working on? Like, what do you, what's the most painful thing? Like, basically just seeing where can I provide value for the first couple of days. They're paying for me to be there. Um, and I ended up talking to this one guy who spent three weeks of every month taking all these spreadsheets from all these different systems and departments. And his job was to consolidate all these spreadsheets into one master spreadsheet that, um, that some departments use in order to report on. Essentially, he would just do some pivot tables. He would copy and paste data from one spreadsheet to another, had some macros. It took him three weeks to build out all these reports every month. And then I think he just basically spent the last week making sure he didn't screw anything up. So it was a full-time job. Basically his full-time job. So him and I actually spent my first day there and we just did a couple, i not lying at all. We used summarize, filter, and join to take his spreadsheet mess and essentially in a click of a button, automate that away for him. And he actually didn't even believe me at first that it was that easy until he validated all my results were the same as his, but that he didn't really have to do any QA because the computer is doing the crunching. So as long as the program is coded correctly, you're good. So, okay, so that was, so that was step one. Yeah, I basically showed him how to do step one. Mm -hmm. Summarize, join, filter, reduce mistakes. Great. And so but then now in what the same happens day, next? I actually showed him how to automate it. Okay. So script comes next. Step three. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't do any sort of advanced analysis. We went right to automate. That's right. That's great. So on to step three. Script happens. Now the three weeks are gone. It's one click. Exactly. So I kind of automated this guy's job away, but at the <laughs> same time, I saw the light bulb turn on and he was like, oh, this is how we can use data analytics to help us automate big parts of yeah, our job. I forget who it, I don't remember who to attribute it to, but the famous quote, either you're the one creating the automation or you're the one being automated away. <laughs> Sounds like this guy made a decision, hopefully. I'm not actually totally sure where your story is going. Hopefully this guy made a decision to be the one creating the automation. Yeah, the reason why this is one of my favorite stories is I ended up running into the same guy two years later at ACL Connections, which is our user conference every year. And him and I ended up catching up. He ended up having, he now has his own department, his own data analytics department, where he does data automation tasks for the rest of his company. And he ended up just seeing the value from that this thing that he hated to do, this copying and pasting of data spreadsheets. And he was like, oh my God, I could just automate that away and do something else. Yeah. Well, he made his own something yeah. else <laughs> That's cool. by taking the power of just a few simple commands and, and scaling that out to other parts of the organization that maybe didn't, the light bulb hadn't turned on. So they yet. ended up with a full scale data automation program that added these magical robots to their team, basically. Yeah, essentially this guy built their data analytics program just from those few days that I spent with them. The light bulb turned on. Yeah, cool. Then he had all this time to go and learn right. how, to, how to scale that out. So we talked about a bunch of areas to use this. We talked about gift cards. We talked about purchase orders, invoices. I remember we talked about IT security incidents. We talked about bribery. There's a litany of places you can start and get that exact same um, experience that Kevin just described. And um, we'd love to hear your story if you've done that or if you'd like to do it and want some ideas, let us know. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Right on. Bye.